Welcome to the Global Philosophy of Religion Project at the University of Birmingham, directed by Professor Eugen Nagasawa, a renowned philosopher of mind and religion. We at Closer to Truth are excited to collaborate with Eugen, a regular contributor and an old friend. Eugen, welcome. It's always great to see you. Thank you. Thank you for having me. I remember when you and I and Closer to Truth producer director Peter Getzels began discussing your vision for the Global Philosophy of Religion project. Now we have completed our first theme, the existence and nature of God and deities. How do you feel? Oh, it's very exciting and I'm glad that uh, we have done so much in the first year of our project. So Closer to Truth is presenting 26 in-depth sessions uh, of videos with diverse philosophers of religion, including 21 directly on different traditions, uh, three panels of combined traditions, and of course, your introduction, and now this wrap-up summary, which I'm very much looking forward to, uh, to going through with you. So let's, uh, let me begin by just listing the traditions we've covered, and, and I'm going to do it alphabetically so I don't show any favorites. So African religions, Baha'i faith, Buddhism, Hinduism, Vedanta, Islam, Jainism, Judaism, Kabbalah, Mormonism, process theology, Shinto, Sikhism, Sufism, Zoroastrianism, and, and world religions broadly, as well as Christianity and dialogue with all the rest. So, Eugen, uh, let, let's begin. What's your overall sense of this first theme of the Global Philosophy of Religion Project, the existence and nature of God and deities? You, you and I are rather complementary here, complementary with an E, in that the Global Philosophy of Religion Project is your longstanding vision, and I was in the trenches of the discussions themselves. So I've been seeing all the trees of the diverse traditions. What do you see when you see the forest? What does the forest look like? Yeah, so as you, you were mentioning, I think probably we met about 10, 11 years ago. Yeah. And at that time, I was leading a project called the Pantheism and Panentheism Project. And my aim then was to you know expand the scope of the philosophy of religion just a little bit because philosophers tend to just focus on traditional theism, the traditional concept of God. And I wanted to shed light on alternatives. So I wanted to address pantheism and panentheism then. But the, my ambition was pretty small then. And we are doing something much, much bigger here. Because as you were saying, we have covered so many different religious traditions, not just the five big traditions like Buddhism, Hinduism, Judaism, Christianity, and Islam, but all other traditions, including underrepresented religious traditions like the Baha'i faith, Jainism, Shinto, Sikhism, and so on. And I like your analogy of a forest because I want to think that you know each religious tradition represents big trees in the forest, and there are branches in each trees, and they represent different schools of thought, thought in each tradition. But overall, we have this massive forest which represents uh, you know, diverse perspectives and ideas and beliefs. And, you know, we this forest might be a little bit, me little bit messy uh, if we focus on specific trees or specific uh, uh, areas of the forest. But, you know, overall, we have this beautiful, comprehensive, organic uh, picture here. And I want to think that the global philosophy of religion is like this big forest. Yeah, I love the, your continuation of the analogy, because if you look at each individual tradition e and you see the branches of each one, we didn't explore all the different branches, but all of them have the same kind of branching structure, uh, which is very interesting in looking at a global philosophy of religion, that as you have divergences in doctrines over decades and, 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 and centuries and millennia even, uh, the branches uh, build and feed on each other. And obviously they're not the same, but there's a similar structure to it. And, you know, people often assume that, you know, in order to adopt this kind of global approach, you have to assume that all the trees are the same. So often, you know, religious pluralists believe that, you know, all religions, they ultimately talk about the same thing or they share common beliefs. But that, that's not the presupposition for the Global Philosophy of Religion project. Because we, I want to think that, you know, we invite everyone, not just the religious pluralists, but also inclusivists, exclu ex exclusivists and so on, 
uh, all views in the philosophy of religion. Yeah, that's the that's the true pluralism uh, in terms of a uh, of a pluralism of ideas. Yeah, uh, in, in, the, in the global marketplace of religious ideas. So I, that, that's great. A crucial focus, as you've done it in the Global Philosophy of Religion project, is an emphasis on philosophy. It's the philosophy of religion. It's not comparative religions. It's not religions 101. Um, it's not about the religious practices, nor the religious organizations, nor the history of these religions, nor the sociology or the rituals. What can a philosophical, narrowly focused perspective contribute to religion? Yeah, so as you say, you know, there are you know, many different approaches to religion. So there can be a sociological approach, anthropological approach, historical approach, and so on. But we have always been emphasizing that our project is a philosophy project. So our project is a global philosophy of religion project. So we want to address specific philosophical issues. So that's why we have selected three specific philosophical themes the existence and nature of God and other deities, uh, death and immortality, and the problem of evil and suffering in the world. And that's because I believe that these problems are shared among different religious traditions. I don't claim that you know that all people in all religious traditions are interested in these problems, but I want to think that these problems can be addressed uh, uh, f by philosophers from diverse traditions, and they represent some of the common issues throughout different religious traditions. Now, each of these traditions have some similarities in their beliefs, and we'll talk about that, and obviously differences, uh, but the way we're trying to approach it is from a similar methodology. So many of the people who participated are schooled in philosophy, philosophical thinking independent of their own belief tradition and indeed their own personal beliefs, but they have this similarity of, of, of understanding the nature of philosophical discourse. Yeah, so we really invite original philosophers and thinkers from diverse traditions. Uh, we don't want to just uh, uh, recite you know, what's believed in different religious traditions. So we are not interested in uh, world religion 101. We want to discuss you know, specific philosophical issues from original perspectives representing diverse traditions. So let's talk a little bit of, of some of the content that uh, we've uh, enjoyed uh, over this time, and that is uh, on the web and on the Closer to Truth website and Closer to Truth uh, uh, YouTube channel. So let's briefly distinguish among the traditions the various approaches. Let's start with the existence of God, because that's the first part of the first theme, the existence of God. Is existence even an issue in most religious traditions? Yeah, that's a good question. Uh, I'm a big fan of the literature on the existence of God in the philosophy of religion, because there are a lot of, at least in the Western tradition, there are a lot of fascinating arguments for and against the existence of God. So there are the ontological argument, the cosmological argument, the teleological argument for the existence of God. But also there are arguments against the existence of God, like the problem of evil, the problem of divine hiddenness, and various arguments to show that the concept of God is logically incoherent and therefore God cannot exist. And I had been hoping that there are many other arguments in other religious traditions as well. Uh, but actually, you know, there, of course, there are many uh, very sophisticated arguments in Islam and Judaism. And some of these arguments are much older than uh, philosophical arguments for the existence of God in the Christian tradition. Uh, but if we, if we look at the Eastern traditions, we don't see many arguments for the existence of God or other deities. There are some arguments that are comparable to the design argument, the teleological argument, or the cosmological argument. But it seems to me that Eastern philosophers are not necessarily interested in demonstrating or proving the existence of God. And uh, one interesting remark uh, that was made in one of your interviews was um, by um, Motsamai Molefi. And he's a, a scholar who represents African religious traditions. And he was saying that you know, in, in African culture, it's not necessarily polite to try to prove that your religious belief is correct. 
so maybe you know to demonstrate that God exists and your theistic belief is correct and might look a little bit arrogant and uh, you know I can see this point uh, as someone who comes from Asia because you know Asian people tend to think uh, like that too uh, but also there are some spiritual or mystical uh, approaches to the existence of God so in some traditions people train to you know, have mystical or religious experiences to appreciate the existence of God or to grasp the nature of God or uh, some supernatural existence beyond humanity and so on. And also another interesting idea that emerged in your some of your interviews, interviews with, um, for example, Toji Kamata, who talked about Shinto, or uh, Mari Helen, Helen Goris, who talked about Jainism, uh, or even Motsumai Molehi, uh, who talked about African religions, was that you know in those traditions people often recognize the existence of God in everyday life. So you don't necessarily need special training to experience God, or you you need to develop a philosophical argument to to prove the existence of God, because God can be found in nature or in everyday events or everyday objects and so on. And I, I thought that was very interesting. Yeah, uh, w one of my favorite comments uh, on the uh, on the, the Close Truth YouTube channel uh, dealt with uh, uh, the Shinto philosophy, and, and the person write, wrote, and I'm quoting now, he says, I admit that when I started thinking uh, and, and uh, about the, the video on, on Shinto with, uh, with Ko Koji Kamata, uh, he, he said, I thought, what a silly religion this is with mountain gods and things. And then he said, the more I listen, the more it grows on me and made me sense that that this grounding in history, earth, and life has a deeper significance. That, that doesn't mean he became a Shinto acolyte, but he saw that a, a wholly different approach could have a deeper meaning. Yeah, so if you construe Shinto as a form of animism, you might think that that sounds like a very primitive religious belief. But actually, even in uh, Judeo-Christian traditions, there is this idea that you know nature is a, a manifestation of uh, uh, God's greatness and so on. So you know, some people have some kind of sub, uh, um, religious experience almost by experiencing thing, things in nature. So it might not necessarily be foreign to uh, Western or uh, monotheistic traditions. So let's move from the existence of God, and I think you're distinguishing the uh, the importance of arguments for and against God, perhaps in the Western traditions more than the Eastern traditions. But how about the nature of God in God's own self when comparing the different traditions? How similar are the traits of God? Yeah, the nature of God is a very profound topic because it's relevant to so many issues in the philosophy of religion. So one interesting question that you addressed in some of the interviews is, you know, if people in different religions, they worship the same God. And it seemed to me that in many traditions, there is a hint of religious pluralism. Uh, so in Mormonism, so Jim Falconer uh, addressed Mormonism and uh, Keshab Sin, who talked about Sikhism, Mary Helen Goris, who talked about Jainism, and also uh, Stephen Labden, who uh, addressed the Baha'i faith, they, they were implying that in their traditions, there is this idea that um, you know, people in different religions, they may be worshiping the same God or same uh, divine existence. Uh, but in other traditions, of course, uh, some people believe that there is only one true religion and uh, this religion is, is incompatible with other religious traditions. Uh, another interesting topic that is relevant to the nature of God was was the problem of evil and God's goodness. So you interviewed uh, Ted Good, who addressed Zoroastrianism, and I thought it was very interesting that he was saying that there is no problem of evil for Zoroastrians, because Zoroastrians believe that uh, good and evil are part of creation. So evil is not a surprise for Zoroastrians. So evil is a problem only for people who believe that God is uh, all powerful and all good. Uh, but he was also implying that you know, there, there can be a different type of the problem of evil for Zoroastrians. I think this is a good example where you endorse a different 
concept of God, then you avoid certain problems that tend to arise for um, other concepts of God. But at the same time, you might face different types of problem by endorsing a different concept of God. In one sense, uh, when we're thinking of God in a more general transcendent way, the traditions are very similar in the sense that that's, in essence, a definition of religion itself, that there is some transcendent reality, because if there weren't, then it wouldn't be a religion, it'd be a philosophy or something else. So in that sense, they're similar. But I enjoyed actually digging to the next layer and seeing the the differences among the traditions as to the nature of God. And I, let, let me just give you my reflections, and, 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 and you can comment on it. Uh, so, for example, I would see the the... the what I might call the pure monotheism of uh, Islam and and Judaism, um, and, and Islam, I thought it had the, the 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 most profound understanding of God in terms of a transcendent God, whereas the Judaism God is more more imminent in terms of interactions, but it's still that same monotheism. Then Christianity, of course, still has is monotheism, obviously, but it has the Trinity, uh, which you, you know, you, you got to deal with. And Christian philosophers deal with that extensively, um, but it does create a difference between Islam and Judaism. And then if we go to Buddhism, uh, which doesn't have the same kind of, of, of theistic God, and Hinduism, which has really a multiplicity of ways of thinking about it. It has multiple gods, so people think it's a, it's a, a, a polytheistic religion, but then some claim that those are just different manifestations of the one god, and then in, in some sects in Hinduism, you have closer to Buddhism with no theistic. So Hinduism seems to embed a broader category, and then as you said, Shinto, where it, God is in nature, maybe more pantheistic. We brought in Mormonism because Mormonism, although it, it, it is, many say, a, a branch of Christianity in that they worship uh, uh, and, and see Jesus as, as uh, part of, of God, has a God in a very different sense. It, it's a very humanized God that, that uh, uh, what man now is God was and what God is now man will be. I mean, it's a very radical approach. And then process theology, which has a very different kind of God that is a God that is in developing, which is exactly the opposite of the pure um, uh, transcendent God. So we have this God that is constantly growing and changing and interacting and uncertain. So, I, I mean, that's that's the spectrum that I, I felt and I'm kind of overwhelmed by it. Yeah, so, you know, it's one sim simple way of trying to classify different view is to count how many entities exist in each tra tradition. And, you know, you could say that atheists claim that there is zero God and monotheists would say there is one God and polytheists say that there are more than one God. It can be infinitely many God. But, you know, as you are saying, you know, the, the actual picture is not that's simplistic. And there are so many different ways of understanding transcendence and immanence and, you know, all sorts of uh, attributes that we ascribe to God or gods or other uh, divine entities. So, you know, it's, it's, it's quite difficult to uh, have a clear classification of different views. If it were clear, there wouldn't be a need for a global philosophy of religion, right? <laughs> exactly. Yeah, that's right. That's right. So, so let, let me ask you this question. I've been thinking about our conversation. It's really one I, 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 I want to ask you. We recognize all these similarities among the different traditions. Uh, and certainly as human beings have migrated over the centuries and millennium, cultural diffusion took place. I mean, we know that for a fact. It's well documented that Buddhism going from India to China is one example. Um, uh, but there are two other possible reasons as well why we see the similarity. Uh, e each, as an explanation, is the opposite of the other. So on the one hand, maybe atheists and, and cognitive, science, cognitive science would say it could be the same cognitive science of religion generating proclivities in all human beings, all societies, for seeing hidden agents which were pressured by evolutionary survival capabilities, uh, where they had to look out for jaguars in the bush. And so they're, they're attuned, those people who were attuned to hidden agents 
were uh, were the fittest and survived and reproduced, and that caused more and more p direction towards these hidden agents. On the other hand, uh, theists would say, if there is a God, uh, wouldn't such a God have created human brains and minds to be able to apprehend their creator? So, I mean, those are the kinds of arguments that are made to see this similarity across traditions. Yeah, so there are these uh, cognitive and evolutionary accounts of why, why we see supernatural agen agency in nature. And, um, you know, maybe there are some reductive scientific account of uh, explanations of you know, why, why people embrace these strange religious beliefs. But as you were saying, you know, religious believers obviously say that, you know, there are, there are good reasons why we have this kind of cognitive capacity, because if there is God, uh, who want us to? Who wants us to recognize his or her or its existence? Then, of course, uh, they would give us this kind of capacity. And so, yeah, it's a it's an ongoing debate uh, between cognitive scientists and philosophers. And obviously, this is closely related to the Global Philosophy Religion Project because, uh, you know, these scientists are interested in how come there is this uh, cultural diversity in religious belief, and if, if we can provide a scientific account of of the diversity. And that's, yeah, that can be one of the topics that we can address as part of the global philosophy of religion. Program. Yeah, I, th I think that's an important one. Uh, I, I'm constantly struck by the similar approaches and styles and sophistication of the superb philosophers of religion that were in our first, uh, uh, first theme. Um, even though their traditions vary greatly and, their, and the ideas that they present are dramatically different, at least on a, on a methodological level, I was going to say superficial, but it's not superficial, it's what kind of a deep methodological way, they evince a very common way of thinking, the people as part of our project. I think that's both a strength of our project and potentially a weakness, because we're, we're, we're recognizing that we're approaching religion in a, in a very, uh, in a very uh, tight way in order to get depth on that, but there are per perhaps other ways that are non-philosophical that are equally or more valid, people might say. Yeah, so I want to think that the Global Philosophy Religion Project is really a work in progress. Uh, we don't have any specific methodology or specific framework, and I think that's a good thing because we can explore all sorts of approaches. And I think it would be too ambitious if we said that, you know, we will establish this field of the global philosophy religion uh, in one or two years. And I think it would be a long term project and exploring different approaches and methods. That's that's part of this, our project as well. Uh, Intra-religious differences within traditions are sometimes just as fierce and sometimes more than inter-religious differences uh, when we not look further than uh, the wars between Catholics and Protestants in Europe, um, the role of Sufism in Islam or Kabbalah and Judaism or arguments in the ancient uh, sacred texts in the Ind India and Indic religions. Um, uh, and, and so, so as you compare the, the differences within religions to the differences between religions, is there a, a bigger theme that comes out of that? You know, just like your forest analogy, uh, each tree represents each religious tradition. And as you say, within each tradition, there are uh, disputes and, you know, disagreements and agreements. And, you know, that, that, that's a good thing, I think, for philosophy religion. And it, b between different trees also, there are some disagreements. Uh, it's not the aim of the Global Philosophy Religion Project to, you know, reach some, you know, co common shared views, um, you know, as closer to truth. You, you, you like a, a lot of disagreements, you like unique ideas, interesting ideas, and even crazy ideas, and you encourage uh, debates and disputes, and I think that's a healthy thing, and that can happen within a specific tradition and also between different traditions as well, and I think that's a healthy thing to have for for the Global Philosophy Religion Project. Yeah, so certainly for the uh, our project, it, it is. Uh, it, it's uh, it, it, it's I'm sometimes um, kind of a, a, a mystified or amazed that, uh, that when you have from the outside a doctrinal dispute that, that looks like such a nuance, uh, you know, the nature of Jesus's um, uh, will, 
uh, that from the outside, you know, you're agreeing on the existence of God. The Bible is true. Jesus is God, and just d d different. But though that that difference can become literally can become violent, um, and and I think the best that you can say about that is it represents it shows the importance of religion in the human uh, psyche. Yeah, I think that kind of thing can happen in other areas of philosophy too. So metaphysicians can talk about very subtle technical issues and they dispute among themselves all the time. And you know, if you are an outsider, you might think that they are, they are discussing really trivial issues. And that's why I think it's important that we also address some big fundamental issues like the existence and nature of God or uh, death and immortality and so on. So we chose those big questions on purpose because we thought that the, the, these questions are, questions are shared uh, among people in different traditions, not just the people within the specific tradition. Philosophy of religion in its current form, in one sense, uh, developed during the Middle Ages, pioneered by Islamic, Christian, Jewish philosophers. Uh, and in recent decades, maybe the last uh, 50 years or so, philosophy of religion has largely developed in the Christian tradition. Uh, as you've said, and, and your vision is to facilitate and enable philosophy of religion now to become truly a global enterprise. Uh, why do you think now is, is the time for this to happen? So we chose the existence and nature of God and other deities as our first topic because we thought that this was the most fundamental question in the philosophy of religion. So I know uh, one of your most favorite questions is why there is something rather than nothing. And that's precisely because that's the most fundamental ontological question that we can ever raise. And I think the existence and nature of God and other deities, that's, that's a similar question in the philosophy of religion because it's linked to all sorts of questions in this area of philosophy. Uh, we cannot talk about you know, more specific questions like the problem of evil or the problem of hiddenness or miracles or science and religion and so on without addressing this fundamental question first. And in some of your interviews, you specifically addressed some broad metaphysical questions about free will, consciousness, time, space, and causation. And they, these are relevant, even though they are not directly about the existence of God or other deities, because they are fundamental building blocks in ontology. And uh, the existence of and the nature of God and deities, they are relevant because we want to figure out first what exists and what doesn't exist, and you know what, what are uh, on the fundamental level of reality. And that's why we chose this most basic and fundamental question as our first theme. Yeah, I, I, I loved it um, because you dealt with if, questions of God, but when you bring in metaphysics, you, you, you have the tension about which, if God is good, and, and, and if good is a, uh, and that's a critical factor, but good is some property, some characteristic, does that exist independent of God? And if so, is God then dependent upon this property that is independent of God? And the same is true about other, other kinds of things as well. So it really forces you to think about if there is a God, how that God is and, and interacts with everything else. Yeah, so you interviewed Andrew Davis, uh, who addressed process theology, and he was talking about you know, axiarchism, which is the idea that value is a foundation of ontology. So somehow this uh, ethical principle, or this value uh, creates existence, and which is a quite a unusual idea, but your, your old friend... Um, John Leslie. Uh, John Leslie, yes, yeah, he defends this kind of idea as well. And, you know, this is precisely about, you know, what, what is most fundamental? Is it value or existence? And, you know, this is interesting because it's John, so... John yeah, approaches so. John approaches value as fundamental the way m more intensely than many ministers ap approach the deity of Jesus. I can tell you that. <laughs> <laughs> um, look ahead to uh, themes uh, two and three. I'm very much looking forward to theme two coming up very soon. It might take uh, some months uh, to, 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 to get our, um, our, our interviews on the air, but we'll be in Birmingham. We'll look forward to seeing you. So just, uh, just a few words about uh, themes two and three. 
Yeah, so our second theme is death and immortality, and we are having a conference at the University of Birmingham in June 2022, so it's very soon. And uh, so, you know, I always say that this topic is relevant to everyone because sadly everyone will eventually die and we can, you know, ask, you know, what is death and is there anything beyond death and uh, is there immortality and so on. So these questions are all relevant to us and, you know, in different religious traditions, we find different types of immortality like resurrection, recreation, reincarnation and so on. And also there are different systems of immortality, like heaven, hell, purgatory, the union with the um, ultimate existence or immortality by remembrance or even transhumanism, which is technological immortality. So we can address these uh, questions uh, with people from different diverse religious traditions. Uh, our third topic, which we will address uh, in 2023 is the problem of evil and suffering in the world. So obviously the problem of evil is a challenge for traditional Judeo-Christian Islamic philosophers because they normally believe that there is God who is all-powerful and all-loving, but then you know how come there are wars and uh, crimes and all sorts of horrible things in this world? And that's the problem of evil. And in some traditions, people reject the distinction between evil and uh, good. Uh, so they might think that the problem of evil doesn't arise for them. But for example, Buddhists talk about suffering. They talk about Dhaka. And you, know, you can ask, you know, is there a different kind of problem for Buddhists? So is there a problem of suffering instead of the problem of evil? And we'll be addressing these questions from, again, diverse perspectives in 2023. What's your big vision for the Global Philosophy of Religion project? Where would you like to be looking back if we were a decade or even more from now? What would, what would fulfill your vision for the project? Yeah, so this is a, you know, a very ambitious project because we want to establish with you a new field of philosophy called the Global Philosophy of Religion. And uh, as I said earlier, it's very much work in progress. Uh, we are exploring all sorts of ideas and approaches. Uh, but, uh, you know, my idea is that we gather together all excellent philosophers from all religious traditions and we address common issues from multi-religious perspectives. And I really believe in the power of diverse thinking. So there are a lot of psychological and scientific researches which suggest that you know diverse thinking is very important for innovation uh, and i think we can apply this idea to philosophy as well and you know i hope that in, you know eventually this kind of approach will be adopted in other areas of philosophy like metaphysics epistemology ethics and so on because i think this multi multi-faith multi uh, cultural and diverse approach approaches can be uh, uh, very important for philosophical progress. Well, we're very proud at Closer to Truth to be your partner in this endeavor and not to be megalomaniacs about it, but I, I believe that the common um, uh, understandings and ways of thinking that we can bring together across different traditions and cultures and ethnicities uh, can, in, even in a very small way, help uh, a very fractious and uh, split world that we, we seem to be inhabiting right now. Um, you know, we, we want to focus on what we do well, but hopefully that the commonalities that we face together can, can be a, a, at least a small light uh, for others. Yeah, I, I really believe that the, the global philosophy of religion uh, is you know, more important than ever. You know, there are a lot of problems in the world and, you know, we don't directly address these issues, political issues or ethical issues, but at the same time, we want to think that somehow we can indirectly contribute to make the world better. Eugen, you, you, you told me that uh, you, we would do this interview, but you were going to throw the questions back to me. So, uh, yes. you know, now, now, now is your turn. Yes, now I have the priv privilege of um, asking you some questions. You know, I know you always ask people questions, and now I can <laughs> ask you some questions. 
Uh, so my first question is that, you know, you are a scientist and you have a PhD in brain science from UCLA. And I discovered recently that you got this PhD when you were very young, in your early 20s. And, you know, it's very impressive. But, um, you know, often scientists think that, you know, philosophy is obscure and religion is obscure and the philosophy of religion is like the worst combination of the two. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, you take philosophy of religion very seriously. So I always wanted to ask you, you know, why you think the philosophy of religion is important for uh, getting closer to truth? Uh, actually, uh, I, I start below both. So it's not science and philosophy of religion. I've started for whatever strange reason uh, as, as a very young person. Um, just just uh, obsessed with the idea of existence. You know, what is existence? How can you dig down to the deepest and most fundamental level, Bach, bedrock of reality? And I, I had different ways to try to access it. And one of the ways was to study physics and philosophy. Another way at one point briefly was to try to see if there's something beyond the physical through parapsychology science with uh, J.B. Ryan. Uh, but ultimately I settled to study the brain as the, as the, the uh, embodiment literally of, of all the sciences coming together to create something that enables us to be the vehicle to enable us to ask all the other questions. So it wasn't that I was a scientist and then discovered philosophy of religion. I, I wasn't anything, I, but I just had this passion to understand existence and decided that brain science and learning science would be the way to, to achieve that. And of course, that didn't achieve that. I, I learned a lot and had a great time and, and was greatly enriched by it, wonderful professors, etc. cetera. Uh, but over time, I began, then began to... to to explore philosophy much more so and philosophical thinking is indeed the core of, of closer to truth and our relationship over over this time and one of our very first uh, projects was with you and alternative concepts of God as you've said more than a decade ago and that's been a very important part of the uh, uh, of the growth of closer to truth mm, brilliant uh, the other question that I had was that um, uh, so you have interviewed so many philosophers and scientists and, you know, what, what sort of people do you enjoy most to interview? What kind of, I mean, for the, in relation to the Global Philosophy Religion Project, what sort of people you hope to interview for your future programs? You, you know, it sounds, it sounds trite, but I love every interview that I do because it's, it's a new world for me and I love reading their papers. I don't read them all. I wish I could. I, 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 I skim some. I read what I'm interested in. I focus on the very kinds of questions we focus on closer to truth. So it's, it's in a sense easier that we're not dealing with very broad concepts in society or anthropology, sociology, or individual psychology, but really looking at questions of, of uh, as you know, the three core areas of closer to truth, cosmos, which is physics, cosmology, science, caus causation, truth things about uh, consciousness, brain, mind, personal identity, free will, um, life after death, and then meaning, uh, which seeks the, if there is anything transcendent, and philosophy of religion is the, is the core, thinking, uh, core thinking there. And so each individual is like a, a whole new world to me. And then at, for a period of days, um, that person becomes the most important person in the world to me. And I, I really look forward to that that discussion. Um, and it's 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 a process that doesn't grow old, even though I've done it a lot of times. It's it's uh, just thrilling to me to be able to to engage. Well, if you ask me what, what I enjoy most, what I enjoy most is 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 hearing something I never thought of before. It doesn't mean it's right, and it doesn't mean I agree with it. Um, and it, it it may may be obvious that everybody knows, and I just didn't. But when I hear something or a way of thinking or an argument that I hadn't heard before, uh, that to me is very exciting. Yeah, I'm the same. You know, some people 
get annoyed when people present ideas that you don't you don't agree with but actually i like you know unusual ideas and original ideas <laughs> unique ideas yeah well you've you've helped to uh, introduce a lot of unique ideas to close the truth <laughs> and uh, i can't tell you i agree with any of them but i love all of them that's for sure <laughs> um, you know i've been thinking about the uh closer to truth uh, global philosophy Richard project uh, uh, a collaboration and uh, let me just tell you what I've been thinking, because I knew you'd be asking me some questions, and I, I was thinking about this, and I think there are two general objectives that we have, and then two very specific ones. So the general objectives are uh, for us to continue to provide high-quality, thoughtful content to our growing global audience, of course, and secondly, to enlarge our perspective beyond what has been largely philosophy of religion in the Christian tradition. Um, because, uh, you know, certainly Christian philosophy in the last 50 years has catalyzed superb philosophy and philosophers of religion. Um, but we agree that this, this has to be broader. Um, and, and indeed, it, right from the beginning, we've had Islamic philosophers, many from the Hindu tradition, uh, Buddhist as well, but they were not, we, we didn't, we, we tried, but we, we didn't try hard enough. And that's why th what you've done is so important to Closer to Truth, especially as we expand on, on YouTube all over the world, you know, 190 countries. And I just checked the statistics uh, last year, we had, uh, had 1.5 million views in India alone in the running year, which has been one of our growing markets. So in essence, we must expand. Um, and, and so this, this, is, this is literally, I, I was going to say, a godsend to us. I don't want to think that we're, that we're that special, but it's really been terrific. And then the two specific objectives that you said are very, very uh, uh, complementary together. We want to introduce this new field to our viewers globally and to help you catalyze development of this new field among academic philosophers, because uh, both, we hope, in a small way can help global understanding uh, in, in a fractious world. In the Global Philosophy Religion Project, we want to uh, not only just to cover diverse religious traditions, but also we want to cover diverse geographical regions as well. So it's very important for us to reach India and China and you know all of these places where there are uh, big audiences. And uh, Closer to Truth is a very important uh, global platform for our project. So. Uh, yeah, well, we look forward to seeing you very soon at the University of Birmingham again and uh, Death and Immortality coming up. Videos will be posted to Closer to Truth late, later this year and, and early next year. Uh, but viewers can watch all 26 videos of the first theme of the Global Philosophy of Religion Project, The Existence and Nature of God and Other Deities, on the Closer to Truth YouTube channel and the Closer to Truth website. Eugene, it's always a pleasure many more years of our collaboration ahead. Thank you so much, Robert.